Hey everyone, I'm Ben. And Nora. Welcome back to the Midwest Model Shop. Sorry it's been a little while since uh, we've had a video out. I just finished up a major training event out in Colorado that took two months basically. Uh, and now we're back, so we got a little bit of work done on the Titanic. Today we're going to just briefly, I, like I mentioned last time, finish putting in the last of the fiber optics for the main portholes. And then the big deal about today's episode is we're going to tackle the D-Deck first class entrance onto the ship on both port and starboard sides. Also in today's video, we're going to have a fun little segment that I'm going to call Who Missed the Boat? Um, but before all that, we also want to feature these figures that we received from Josh Furman in Encino, California. Yeah, Josh, thanks for sending your figures in. Let's take a look and let's get into the build. Okay, here we go with our figures from Josh in California. He sent us a whole bunch of standing seagulls, which actually turned out really, really nice. Uh, let's see if I can give him the same focus there for everybody to see. Excellent detail, really well done. And then uh, he went and sent us some additional band figures. He knows we already got some, but they turned out really great. He made a comment about the leg falling off of the cello, um, but I'll go ahead and fix that, Josh. Don't worry about it. We'll take care of that for you. The detail on that chair is incredible. Yep. These really look amazing. Really nice. He packaged them really well, uh, all super glued and stuck together. And We got them in one piece, Josh. They did. They showed up, <laughs> and they look awesome. They do. They really do look great. So we're going to go ahead and, like I said, these will go, all these figures will go on the ship when we're done. We'll find a place for all the seagulls up high, I'm sure. And, uh, yeah, it'll be awesome. So anyway, thank you very much, Josh. Really appreciate it. And let's go ahead and get into the build. All right, first order of business, because I know this is at the top of everyone's list of concerns, is I went ahead and, re uh, not reinstalled, but finished installing these last portholes right here. Uh, so they're in. Now, uh, I was going to do several different things, but then I thought, I don't know, no, we're going to draw our attention here to the first class gangway entrance on the side. So what we have here, starting off, this is the kit doors. And as you can see, I did the best that I could to cut out the rectangles. And, you know, it just, it's the best you could do. It's hard to cut out squares. The plastic's thick. If you look on the back there, you can see that I removed with the Dremel large chunks of the plastic uh, in an effort to stay focused, in an effort to thin out uh, the plastic so that it could look more like a window right here. And it's just okay, but you know, you do the best you could do. Uh, fortunately, if you recall, when I was monkeying around with these scale sh uh, warships, um, photo etch we've got doors here and I went ahead and cut a couple out and they have nice square looking uh, windows that we can use so what I'm going to do next here quickly is I'm just going to cut off the raised area and I'm going to cut out that frame to make sure it's oversized just enough that I can install the photo etch over the top and that will give us our nice uh, window look that we want because we're going to monkey around with inside here next. All right, because somebody's going to want to know, this is what it looks like. There's the big gaping hole on the left and the cleaned off area, and then there's our door glued on. So all I got to do is that three more times, and we can press on to the next section. Okay, there the doors back on, painted, looking like they did before I started this whole thing, except that the windows look nice. Uh, I did not put glass in there and you could see right inside no trouble at all uh, but because you could see right inside I thought we should probably fill that area so looking at our reference material here we've got the main entrance this is the um, D-deck first class entrance and basically it's mirrored on both sides and uh, both doors would open um, you've got this sideboard over here there's a door here that goes into this area, and then it's kind of like this stepped area. And there's an arched opening that leads into the center where the main staircase is at. And then there's this hallway that goes down into the ship. So uh, you can buy pre-made, ready-to-go um, entrances on uh, Model Shapeway's website. I'll show a picture up here. A gentleman did a really great job making a 3D printed version of these. You could just buy and put it up. 
Um, I'm gonna go ahead though and just try, try and make one from scratch because, well, two of them, one for both sides, because, uh, yeah, I mean, why not? You could do it too. On today's segment of Who Missed the Boat, we're talking about the candy man himself, Milton Hershey. In December 1911, Milton, whose name became synonymous with chocolate, was traveling in France with his wife Kitty when he wrote a $300 check to the White Star Line, a deposit toward a stateroom on the Titanic's first voyage. When urgent business required his attention back home, he took an earlier trip on the German liner America, one of the ships that later sent ice warnings to the Titanic. The cancellation is often incorrectly attributed to Kitty Hershey falling ill, but by this time she had been ill for several years. A copy of the canceled check to the White Star Line is on display in the Hershey Museum. All right, so let's talk about what we've got here. Um, so there's a door uh, when you come in on the left, and I don't know what it looks like. I couldn't find pictures or drawings, so I just sketched something up. Uh, there's supposed to be um, the sideboard over here, I believe. Thing is, is initially looking inside, uh, you can't really see anything, so I'm gonna opt to leave it out. Um, this floor tile here, I have a big sheet of this. Uh, I went on the uh, 1200 Titanic Facebook page, I went to the resource tab, and there's floor tiling, and this matches some pictures I've seen in the book. Uh, the description, so this floor tiling definitely extends into the Grand Staircase area. It is believed that the same tiling went here. Uh, whether it's true or not, honestly, it doesn't really matter. Um, I picked this side decoration from the same resources. You'll, you'll find some like interior pictures. And I think they said in the book that it's white trim. Uh, in the back, there's an arch doorway. Uh, I forgot that I, I had this extra piece right here. There's actually enough material to keep it congruent, but I, I, the paper was flipped over and I lost it. So I went with some lighter color in the back and I actually cut out an arch. Now here's the deal. Uh, I gotta put some reinforcement on here and I'm gonna glue this into place below the ceiling. I'm going to leave this open for now and that will allow light in. Um, I'm going to leave, there's, there should be a gap between the well deck that sits in above this and on top. Uh, if not, we got to look into that for lighting. I'm also leaving this hallway open. It said this room had natural, um, not natural, sorry, electric light in the ceiling in my book. So, how is this all going to illuminate? That's that's kind of question. So next thing I'm going to do, I know this is kind of, you know, ganky, janky or whatever, but I'm going to put some reinforcement pieces of uh, plastic underneath here so we got something good to glue, and I'm going to get this affixed. i got to make two of them, but I figured I'd just show you this one. Anyway, that's the detail. It looks great out here. Unfortunately, we're going to look at it through tiny little windows, and you're probably not going to see anything. It's probably just going to be all white. But... Uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of neat. So anyway, let's, let's press on. Okay, so here's some things. There are the two rooms installed. Uh, wasn't a real big deal. I've got some supports on either side and just glued them with some super glue and uh, regular Tamiya cement in a position, no problemo. Uh, let's see if I can show you this. We look inside here, so I'm not really, I'm concerned about focusing way back. Can you see through there? You see my little, let's see if I cover this up. My, my window, my door. Now more importantly, on the right here, I know this is fuzzy, see the brown paneling in the back there? If we angle down, if you look carefully, you can see straight through to the windows on the other side. I hope that makes sense. Uh, but the gray that you're seeing down there, see my finger pointing right above here, my thumb? Uh, I was surprised that you would actually be able to see through there. So what that means is um, I'm actually going to connect the hallway. And that's just going to be a strip of styrene, and we'll put the same floor paneling on. 
And that's what would be here because the elevators are here and the grand staircase would be here and then I think there's just a wall right here. So let's do that and I'll put another battery in the camera. Okay, here's that little decking put in, I guess. Uh, no, it's not perfect. It, it just works out where you're looking straight across because like I said, when you look through that window, you are able to kind of see through there. I mean, and this is, this is going to be hard to show with this camera. Getting this in focus is actually really difficult. Uh, I'm going to try the other one here in a minute. But, yeah, let's, let's see if I could show you the whole effect that I'm going for. Okay, so here's the well deck. Fits in. I'll put the, I'll put the focal on just to try and block it off and then here's our main deck and I know this is supposed to have a bunch of other parts on it uh, but we need something to just kind of block the light on the top here um, and then we should turn the lights up and let's see here not as illuminated as all these but it's on and it's kind of like a darker uh, looking area like so far I like that let me see if I can get you a better view okay there we go that's probably as good as it's gonna get but basically you know there's you can tell there's something in there it's not just lit up like the rest of these things obviously it's a little bit darker but the further back that you get uh, let's see if I change the angle there you can see inside just a little bit and that's that's the whole idea I'm just I'm just trying to provide some sort of depth something something back there beyond just illuminated windows uh, obviously I could have just went ahead and you know um, blanked this off with some acetate or something and given it kind of the same illumin illumination as the uh, portholes but I think that 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 kind of helps out here a little bit um, and if we tip it up you can see just down in there there's the floor tiles so anyway I think that was worth the effort and it looks kind of cool and I think most importantly from above let me go ahead and show you when we come at the ship from up here even though it's just kind of you know whatever this one little part uh, I believe it gives the ship some context. I mean, these things are not, this wasn't a hollow ship. This was a giant structure that had hundreds and hundreds of rooms inside of it and hallways and corridors and everything. And I don't know, it adds a little bit of life to it. So anyway, I think that's all we're going to do for today's episode. Thank you very much for watching. When we come back next time, we're going to work on the forecastle and the poop deck and some of the other LED stuff. I uh, hope you're all doing well and enjoying the summer. Uh, we'll see you again soon figures from Josh, Josh Furman. Josh Furman, California. Josh no, Furman. Fun little segment that I'm going to call Who Missed the Boat? That's good. Let's do that all over. Because <laughs> I like to be like, we're going to talk and you're going to say. Why? Because you never do that. Okay. I'm sure my Star Wars shirt looks good like all the other figures that we received. Like... Good. Good. Good.